yeah, I'm skipping, I'm skipping. Headed to the bank, gonna buy me a new motorcycle. Gotta withdraw some money. I think this is like the fifth one inside of three years since getting the dirt bikes and trials. So if you are looking for tips on how to convince the wife that you should be able to buy a bike, stay tuned. So I know some people are on the buy it new every year plan. I am not on that financial plan. I can't afford to buy a new bike every year and then sell it, which usually results in about a $2,000 loss. I think usually that first year price usually drops about two grand when you're selling it. And then maybe $1,000 for the next couple of years each year. But uh, I'm on the plan of getting the bike that someone else just bought for a year. So that's the plan I'm on right now. Here we go, in the bank. Dollar bills, dollar bills. Have the money in savings. I will pay it back. I just have to sell this other bike first. Back from the bank. Maybe I should try to explain this whole bike buying thing. And I think we might just use the whiteboard. This is a new microphone. You're going to see how it sounds. So let's check out this new toy that I got and see how different the audio is once I plug this thing in. It should be coming out. Now through this and we will see what you think about the new audio with the microphone. <clears throat> Alright, so at this point if you're trying to convince a spouse that you should be getting a trials motorcycle and you are a hard enduro or a, a rider of trails and you just enjoy that and you want to get a secondary bike, turn the wife in for this portion because I wrote down some things. This is not an all-encompassing list but I did have some fun putting this together. The first of which is riding a trials bike is a ton of fun. This is something that I have had an absolute blast doing and learning and it is very accessible. So my wife would say that the thing that she likes the most is that I'm not leaving to go to Kentucky and driving four hours away in order to ride all weekend and then I'm gone forever. I can literally just jump on the bike, ride in the backyard for 30 minutes to 60 minutes. They say, hey, dinner's ready, come on in. And I've had my fix. I've had my fill. You guys know that sometimes when you learn something new and you've got a new hobby, it's almost like you're an addict and you want more and more and more of it. Well, for me, 30 minutes on the bike a day or every other day fills that need. I get that fix. I'm able to come in and focus on the family because I've been able to let go of the stress and all the things at work that work like clouding my judgment and making me anxious. And now I'm good. I've ridden my bike. I've usually gotten somewhat of a workout, so it's physically demanding. I'm able to stay in better shape and I'm ready to focus on the family. I'm ready to, to be present with my kids. So practicing, you guys can get a lot better at your big bike skills. There's tons of crossover. Pat Smaji recently made a video on that, so I'm not gonna go into all the detail, but your ability to control your clutch, your throttle, your balance, your turning, all of that is amplified because of the amount of reps and practice time that you get on the little bike. It's easier to ride, it's lighter weight, and so you're able to go after things and try things that you might not on the big bike because it's bigger and it's hard to jump off safely. You can ride in your backyard. I kind of hinted on this one. You don't need a big course. You can just have fun even in a car park or a driveway on the flat. There's so many drills I use just with chalk in my driveway. So I have been able to be having tons of fun just with minimal equipment or minimal obstacles. It's slower, it's safer. Riding trials is about control. It's like the violin of motorsports. We're not out there trying to go super fast and jump big things and get hurt. Trials is about demonstrating our ability to control the machine up and over obstacles. And those obstacles do get bigger with time, but you're approaching them slower. Trials is definitely a safer sport than, for instance, motocross. In my opinion, this is where I want my children to ride as opposed to getting into some other more dangerous type sport. Trials is also more social. We wear open face helmets. We talk about the course and the obstacles and the gates and how we're gonna get through things. So it's a very dynamic sport. Um, there's a lot of interaction. A trials community is also very helpful. Everyone's trying to help the next person get better. So it's not like they're my competitor. It's more like they're my friend that I want to be successful. And, and they're kind of comp all competing against the terrain or against the course, so to speak. Okay, sorry, I forgot this one and potentially most important, it's not that much of a financial commitment. If you buy a trials motorcycle, they have a great resale value. They're not dropping that much in money, especially if you're getting something that's a few years old, you can turn around and resell it for probably the exact same amount. You can wear the same boots, the same helmet. So it's not that much of a financial commitment as far as risk, because you can turn around and resell it for probably the same amount, maybe a few hundred dollars less after a year. 
And then finally, I hinted at this one, this stress relief. I would say that is huge. So if you are a first time potential buyer to a motorcycle, I have gotten a ton of benefits out of riding and buying and owning a trials motorcycle. This is just a brief list. You can flip it back to your husband now because I'm gonna talk a little bit about upgrades and how often should you buy a new bike. I am no expert on this by any means. I'm sure there's plenty of other people who have bought bikes over the years. This is now my fifth or sixth motorcycle inside of three years as it relates to dirt bikes and trials motorcycles. And I was able to kind of convince my wife, hey, it's time for an upgrade. Not necessarily because my 2019 bike is that old, but because I do have a lot of hours on it. And so rather than getting into big, you know, overhaul type stuff, and some of you might say, oh, rebuilding the top end is not that big a deal. But if you just constantly are getting newer bikes each year, then you're not having to deal with some of the typical wear and tear things that may happen. So a lot of people, People might get a new bike around $8,500 each year. And each year that they do, they're spending about two grand, I would say, in that usage of that bike. So it's kind of like they're leasing it. I'm on a different plan. My plan is like scale B. So I'm looking for that bike that's maybe been used once or maybe even two owners, and maybe I can get it for 5,500. And then in a year, I can probably sell it again for five grand. So I haven't really put more than $500 out of the course of using it or owning it. And so that's the plan right now is to continue to buy used bikes that are still fairly new. The one I'm going to look at today is a Sherco. It's a 2018, but it only has 10 engine hours on it. 10 engine hours. I know. I'm stoked. Can't wait to go check this thing out. It's also a 300, whereas right now I've got a 250. So hopefully this extra power and a newer bike will be worth it. I do have to sell this old one though in order to pay back the money that I borrowed from the bank. So thanks for tuning in today. Hopefully this was helpful for someone who is considering buying a new bike and for the enjoyment of watching me get a new bike. All right, stopping for some food after picking up the new Sherco. This is a 2018 Sherco Factory 300. Happy with the purchase. It doesn't run real good though. I gotta clean out the carburetor again, maybe replace the fuel filter, but it had sat for like the last year. The guy just didn't put any miles on it. So it's only got 10 engine hours from 2018. So <laughs> this is not hard ridden. All right, so here is the new bike. This thing is nice and clean. It has not hardly been dropped. I don't know at all. The plastic is very new still. Um, very impressed with the condition of it. Even underneath the bike, the pegs, the skid plate. I don't think it's hardly been dropped at all. Not much wear at all on the thing. I put the dirt on the tires as I went out. It had 9.1 hours, now it's got 10. So I'm the one wearing this thing in. It's still got leaving little uh, tits on the, on the tires. I think these are the first original set of tires too. So the one big problem with this is that because it sat for so long, the carburetor just got totally gummed up. And so I've got new jets on order. I gotta clean this out and make it run smooth because it's just, it's, it's not running very well right now, but I know it will once we get it squared away.